the king or any other power if I do not give them the power to speak they cannot say a word to me if I do not give them the power to walk they cannot approach me so why should you be afraid and then that famous sloka was recited by Lord Chaitanya in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat that in every town in village throughout the land my name will be chanted Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with just a few of his associates he sat where there's a kadamba tree and a tamal tree those trees are still there descendants of those trees today and in the very late part of the night Dabir Khas and Sakar Malik along with Sri Ballava they put on common clothes and incognito went to meet Lord Goranga and Sri Balabha's little son who was Jiva he followed behind they approached Lord Nityananda and Thakur Haridas and Lord Nityananda and Haridas Thakur brought them into the presence of Lord Chaitanya. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita explains so beautifully how in a spirit of humility they took lumps of straw and put it in their mouth, wrapped cloth around their necks and offered their prostrated obeisances. In those days this was a tradition of totally humbling oneself before a superior. And they began to cry. Lord Chaitanya had to lift them up. They weren't even willing to get up. And with folded palms, they offered prayers from their hearts praising him as the Supreme Lord who had descended to deliver the most fallen. In essence, they exclaimed that you will not find anyone more fallen than us. Our activities are abominable. Our association is abominable. We are abominable. You delivered Jagai and Madhai, but that was not so difficult for you. After all, they were Brahmins from Navadweep. But they never became the obedient servant of Malachas and Yavanas. We are millions of times more sinful and fallen than Jagai and Madhai. Since you are Patita Pavana, the deliverer of the most fallen, you should consider that your fame and glory for this name will be fulfilled only when you show your mercy upon us. We don't deserve to even be asking for your mercy. Like a tiny little dwarf trying to touch the moon. That is our condition. But yet, we have no other hope. With these words, they were weeping, crying, begging for mercy. Sri Chaitanya, they fell at Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet. And Lord Chaitanya picked them up and embraced them. And then the Lord said, please, You should know that you are my old friends. Stop 
talking like this because your humility is breaking my heart. And then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave them the names Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. They fell at his feet again and placed them on top of his head, their heads. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed their bodies with his tears. They requested Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that it's not safe to remain in Ramakali. And also advised him that to go to Vrindavan with so many millions of people will be such a disturbance. Better you go with just yourself or a few other close associates. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told them that I came to Ram Kali only to meet the three of you. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he indicated to them that they should give up their government services and go to Vrindavan. Rupa Goswami left, loaded his wealth in boats, distributed it half to the Brahmins and Vaishnavas, a quarter to his family members and some for personal emergencies. But Sanatana Goswami couldn't leave because he was the topmost chief minister of the whole government. But after some days, the Nawab Hussain Shah saw that Sanatana Goswami wasn't coming. Sanatana Goswami sent a message that he was very sick. He was sick. He was sick of serving the king. <laughs> and he invited these great scholar Vaishnav to discuss Srimad Bhagavatam with him all day, every day. So the whole kingdom was becoming very, very unmanageable without them. So the Nawabhusay and Shah sent a doctor. And the doctor came back and said, he's fine. What's he doing? He's just studying Srimad Bhagavatam all day. The king was furious. Right in the middle of the Bhagavat Katha, Nawab Hussain Shah storms into the room and says, What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Don't you know that me, your older brother, I'm very fond of cruel deeds and I have to go to Orissa to conquer that place and I need your help and you're here doing this? The heart of Sanatana Goswami was revealed. He said, you can do anything you want, but I can no longer be a part of your government. The king ordered him to be punished and imprisoned. And he left. And it's a long story. But he was a prisoner. The way of the world. One day he's a billionaire, magnificent palaces, fine foods, and the next day he's in a prison. And in those, if, if you go to Ram Kaili, you can actually see the prison cell that Sanatana Goswami was in. It was an underground dungeon. But by, somehow or other, by his very cleverness, he told the jail keeper that I have all these gold coins. Rupa Goswami somehow or other got it to him. 
He said, I'll give you these gold coins if you release me. And the person said, I can't release you. What will the king do to me if I released you? He said, actually, I want to go on a holy pilgrimage to the land of Mecca. And according to your religion, if you assist a person in a holy pilgrimage, you will get abundant blessings of God. And because you're such a saintly person, and you love God so much, I know this is what you want to do. He said, yes, I am a saintly person, and I do want the blessings of God, but the king will punish me. And Sanatana Goswami said, just tell him that I went to the Ganga to pass stool with my ball and chains around my legs, and I jumped in the Ganges and sunk down, and you couldn't find me, and I'm dead. And you'll never see me again because I will be going the back roads. And then he gave him more gold coins. So he released Sanatan Goswami. And eventually, through many, many difficulties, tribulations, traveling through forests, he finally came to Varanasi. And he heard that Lord Chaitanya was at the house of Chandra Shekhar. And he was sitting in a courtyard outside the house. Lord Chaitanya told Chandra Shekhar, there's a great saint who's outside, bring him in. And he looked around and he came back in. He said, there's no great saints there. He said, is anyone there? He said, there's just a very downtrodden, scruffy, dirty-looking mendicant out there. He said, that's him. And Lord Chaitanya came to greet him, and he embraced Sanatana Goswami and wept, wept tears of love for his devotee. It's a long story, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatana Goswami every day, all day, for two months in the science of Krishna consciousness. And then he told Sanatana Goswami that you should go to Vrindavan. Stay for some time and then come and visit me in Jagannath Puri. I have four special purposes that I want you and your brother Rupa Goswami to fulfill for me. By your own personal living examples to show people how to live in the spirit of true renunciation and true devotion. and to take the essence of all the Vedic literatures and establish the supreme glory of pure bhakti in the mood of the residents of Vrindavan as the highest perfection of life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally only wrote eight verses of Shikshastakam. But he empowered the six Goswamis and their followers to take the teachings that he personally spoke to them and amplify throughout the world. Sanatan Goswami came to Vrindavan
and he met Subodhi Rai, who was a very great devotee, who was at one time a very powerful, wealthy man. But he came to Vrindavan under the inspiration of Lord Chaitanya, and his life and soul was just serving. He took Sanatana Goswami through all the twelve forests. And then Lord Ch and Sanatana Goswami eventually came back to Puri, spent almost a year with Lord Chaitanya, and then was sent back to Vrindavan. When Sri Adwaita Acharya was living in Vrindavan at a holy banyan tree that is not far from here called Adwaitavat, the ancient deity of Madan Mohan, in those days known as Madan Gopal, was revealed to him. And he worshipped the deity. And later on, he entrusted the deity to one great Vrijabhasi in Mathura named Purushottam Chobe. When Sanatana Goswami was wandering about Vrindavan, living under different trees each night, once he was in Mahavan and he saw from a distance a very beautiful little boy who was playing with other children. Mysteriously, Sanatana Goswami was so deeply attracted to this little boy, he couldn't stop watching him. And then the whole day went by and the little boy started going <coughs> home. Sanatana Goswami followed him. And the little boy went into a little temple. And when Sanatana Goswami went into the temple, there was no little boy, there was just the deity. And Sanatana Goswami understood that this little boy was Krishna. So that Madan Gopal was being worshipped in Mathura. And as Sanatana Goswami was doing Madhukari, he came to the place and he was invited in. And the Brahman said, please um, let me give you some rotis. And Lord Sanatana Goswami saw something very peculiar, that this Brahmin was, was chastising the deity, that I've offered you all this boga, why aren't you eating it? He even picked up a stick. How will you be well nourished if you don't eat everything I give you? And Sanatana was watching. And he said to the Brahman that actually, this, you know, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. <laughs> this, is, this is not the way you worship the deity. So, oh, I'm sorry. And he reformed himself. Meanwhile, Sanatana Goswami came back to Vrindavan, where he was living at Vadasa Dityatil, just a mountain over the Yamuna River. And Krishna appeared to Sanatana Goswami and said, actually this Brahman, he is in Vatsalya Ras. He's a pure devotee. But now I am going to appear to him in a dream because I want to be worshipped by you. 
And Sanatana Goswami said to the Lord that I, I have no home, I have no food, I have nothing. How am I going to worship you? But all the Lord wants from us is love. So Madan Gopal appeared to the Brahman and told him to give the deity of himself to Sanatan Goswami, which he did. And it was here in Vrindavan Dvadasaditya Thil, that Sanatan Goswami was worshipping Madan Mohan under a tree. He would go out and beg doing Madhukari. Sometimes some Brijabhasis would give him some wheat flour. And he'd add some Yamuna water, make it in ball throw it on hot coals, scrape off the black burnt parts, and offer it to Madan Gopal. And one day, Krishna asked him, this is very simple, can you offer me some salt with it? And Sanatana Goswami, he said, my Lord, this is all that I have. Patram Pushpam Palam Yam Yome Bhakta Prayachtati. Krishna tells in Gita, even if you offer a leaf, a flower, any type of little fruit, or even some water, if it's offered with devotion, I accept it. Not only does Krishna accept it, but Krishna is conquered by even a single leaf that is offered with love. When devotees from Bengal or Puri would visit Vrindavan and come back, the people would ask, tell us how Rupa and Sanatana are living. And they would say, you ask how they're living? They have given up the wealth that everyone longs for, and now they're sleeping on the hard, cold ground in all the five seasons under different trees or under different bushes every night. Their clothes is just the old discarded cloth of the Brijabhasis that they tear into a kopan and a chadar in the winter. As far as food, they just beg for some little piece of roti. Sometimes they get some chickpeas. As far as sleeping, hardly two hours a night do they sleep because they just don't have time. They're constantly singing the holy names in kirtan and dancing and discussing Krishna with each other. They're immersed in writing transcendental books to give this knowledge of Krishna to the whole world. They're always in the ecstasy of the highest love. This is how the six Goswamis are living. So one day, as Sanatan was up there, a merchant with a boat where he carried quantities of riches as well as salt 
got stuck in, a, in the mud of the Yamuna. Now please understand, in those days, this was a very, very secluded forest. There were lions and tigers. And here, in the middle of nowhere, at least from a material perspective, his boat is stuck and he has nowhere to go. This is a major catastrophe. It is said that little Madan Gopal, the deity who's Krishna himself, can independently do anything he likes. So in the form of a little boy, he ran down to the river and this Krishna Das Kapoor, he was in so much distress and the little boy said, there's a great saint named Sanatan up there, why don't you go to him? He can give you, he can give you wisdom and blessings. And as far as me, give me a little salt. Give a little salt to Krishna, and Krishna can give you everything if it is offered with love. So he went up and just by associating with Sanatan Goswami, he felt such shelter. Sanatan Goswami instructed him on the principles of pure bhakti as Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taught him at Varanasi. And Sanatan Goswami, in great humility, he said, my life, my soul, the life and soul of everyone is Madan Mohan. Just take shelter of him and chant his holy names. That is the true wealth. He surrendered his life to Madan Mohan and accepted Sanatan Goswami as his guru. And when he did that, suddenly his boat was free. And he sailed down to the Agra area and sold everything he had and didn't want anything for himself. He came back to Sanatan Goswami and offered him everything. Sanatan Goswami had already given up the wealth of this world. He said, myself, there's no greater opulence to me than sleeping in the sacred soil of Vrindavan under the Kalpa Briksha trees. But Madan Mohan should have a temple. So please, if it pleases you, build him a temple. And the great landmark of Vrindavan, even today, 500 years later, the first major temple of the Vrindavan area was built, Sri Madan Mohan. Sanatana Goswami, he continued to just travel, or he worshiped the deity, he would get other people to assist, and he would roam around Vrindavan. Sometimes he would stay at Pavan Sarovar, near Nandagaon. Sometimes he would stay at Manasaganga, where the ancient Shivalingams of Chakaleshwar Mahadev were installed by Vajranava. Sanatana Goswami was loved by everyone because he loved everyone. He was so expert at relating with everyone in just a way to awaken Krishna in their hearts. He would travel from one village of Vrindavan to another, 
when he would come to a village, all the people would greet him with tears of affection. The young children would see him as a father. The older people would see him as their, as their son. People of the same age saw him as a brother. But everyone saw him as their guru. You have been away for so long. Please come to our homes. And they would feed him and he would ask them, please tell me how are your crops? Has your daughter got married yet? How is your health? How is your mother? How is your cows? How many calves did this cow give? He just knew everything about everyone and so intimately related to them. And this way he captured everyone's hearts in such a personal, loving way. And after establishing the connections of those relationships where everyone felt so cared for and loved by him, he would spend hours and hours and hours discussing Krishna Kata and having Nam Sankirtan. And he would open people's hearts so deeply that whatever he said, they they fully embraced. This was his method of preaching. He would conquer their love with his love and then fill them with Krishna. And the next morning as he was leaving, they would be crying and crying. How could they bear separation from him? And he would leave and he would get to the next village and they would all be crying and crying to greet him. And the next morning they would be crying as he'd leaving and he'd go to the next village and they would be crying to greet him. In this way, Sanatana Goswami traveled to so many of the hundreds and hundreds of villages of Vrindavan area. There's the famous story at Chakaleshwar Mahadev. He was near Govardhan. He would light little lamps with leaves and he would write his books. In those days, writing books was such a nice experience. There wasn't word processors or computers or dictaphones or typewriters. There wasn't even papers or pens or pencils. He would take leaves and have them, he would personally have them processed in such a way and then he would carve each Sanskrit letter in the leaf and that's, he'd get certain herbs from trees to make a certain type of ink and, and wipe that over the, the carved letters. Mosquitoes were biting him. And he was thinking, it's too difficult to do my service all night when there's so many mosquitoes. So he decided the next day he would leave for a more suitable place to perform his devotional service. But the next morning, Lord Shiva, who was Chakaleshwar Mahadev, he could not bear the thought of separation from Sanatana Goswami. So he appeared in the form of a Brahman and said, why are you leaving Swamiji? He told the reason. He said, just stay one more night and if 
mosquitoes bother you, then leave. Sanatana Goswami could not refuse when he was asked with such affection. Then Lord Shiva, who is Mahadev, he called for the demigod in charge of mosquitoes <laughs> and gave the order, don't allow any of your insects to disturb Sanatana Goswami. And from that day on, not a single mosquito bothered him. Sanatana Goswami every day would do parikrama around Govardhan. One time, Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami wanted to offer prasad to Sanatana. And a beautiful little girl from a village, she offered Rupa Goswami some milk and some rice and some Brindavan sugar, some spices, and said, why don't you prepare this kheer for your brother? And then the little girl herself actually prepared it. And Rupa Goswami brought it to Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami began to eat it together. And as soon as they tasted it, they both started trembling in ecstasy. And Sanatana Goswami said, where did you get this? He said, a little girl gave it to me. He said, describe this little girl. As he was describing, both Sanatana and Rupa Goswami realized that their eternal, worshipable Srimati Radharani had personally appeared and cooked for them. And through this story, we can understand the principle of devotional service. Because Sanatana Goswami was very sad. He said, Rupa Goswami, Radharani has served us. We are the servants of the servants of the servants of her servants. How could you allow her to serve us? Part of them were ashamed, but the other part of them could not stop eating the kheer because it was just so good. Today in the world, most people worship God as their order supplier. But here we, here we find the standard of what is actually the consciousness of Vrindavan, pure devotional service. Simply to give pleasure not to expect anything in return except the opportunity to serve. And when we have this spirit, Krishna reveals himself in full when we chant his holy name. When Sanatana Goswami was very old, he was still doing 
the Parikrama of Shigiri Raj Govardhan. And he was doing the long Parikrama, going to Chandra Srovar and all of those places on the outer path. And once a little cowherd boy, who was Krishna himself in disguise, said to Sri Sanatana Goswami, Why? Why in your old age are you taking so much trouble to do this circumambulation? Sanatana Goswami said, It is my service to Krishna. It's my life and my soul. So that little boy went on Govardhan Hill and started playing a flute. And a stone from Govardhan melted under his feet. And the boy came down with that piece of stone. And he said, you see Krishna's footprint and the footprint of his calf and the impression of his stick is on this stone. Just circumambulate this stone, some say four times, some seven, every day, and that will be equal to doing the full Govardhan Parikrama. And the little boy personally carried the Shila back to Sanatana Goswami's Bhajan Kutir. And after the boy disappeared, Sanatana Goswami realized that Krishna himself has given me this order. When Srila Sanatana Goswami was taken by Krishna from this mortal world, practically every Brijabhasi of Vrindavan area, the whole Brajabhumi, came to offer their honor and respect to him because he was their dearest friend and their spiritual master. In honor of Sanatana Goswami, in tears of separation, they all performed Govardhan Parikrama. And on his disappearance day, Guru Purnima, even to this day, among the Brijabhasis, there is the largest crowd of the whole year to do the Govardhan Parikrama. And this was established to honor the compassionate life of Sri Sanatana Goswami. 